Hello and welcome to today's video and today I'm looking at the um, Philips VR68 no sorry 60 yeah 6860 and I'm still working on the um, hi-fi display now I have a pack of the suitable transistors in order to uh, replace the transistor which I think might be at fault but when I was looking at the circuit diagram there's also some um, diodes which feed into the uh, that particular transistor so I've located them both on the board and I've got this rather interesting little tester uh, which tests many different components. It's a professional waveform multimeter and I can't actually see a particular manufacturer which probably means it is a generic uh, Chinese affair which uh, is perfectly okay. A lot of the stuff that does come out of there is of okay quality for the cheaper end of stuff and I wanted to give it a go because I was quite interested to see if it would actually measure um, the diode or test the diode rather so to get it to work I was reading the instruction manual and what you do is you turn it to the component test You then press select until it goes to the diode mode, which you can see there. And then you test the diode. You test it in both directions. And in the direction that the diode is going to be flowing, you would expect to have a reading. So if I just pop this onto the first diode I want to test. So, dot zero L means that current will not flow in the reverse direction, but in the direction that the diode is supposed to have flow, you want a voltage reading like that, which means that the diode is operational. If you've got zero L on both, uh, that means you've got a shorted out diode. If you get a voltage reading on both the diode is shortage shorted shortage shorted so let's test this other diode down here so that's not in the direction of flow and in the direction of flow it is correct so it looks like that one is also working as well. It says if you've got a reading between 0.2 volts to 0.7 volts, which is 0.5, then the diode is serviceable. So that means we can probably start off with replacing the transistor. So I've had the um, I've had the soldering iron on for a little while and I'm just going to pop the uh, infrared module out just get it out of the way again there we go don't worry it's not on it is at the moment powered off as you can see let's get this into a position that's closer to the camera and let's get this out of here. So we need to do there, here, and wriggle it over there. There we go. Right, let's flip it upwards. So what we will do is actually give this 
bit of a clean, so it's a bit of muck on those tracks. I doubt it would have caused a problem, but a uh, bit of safe than sorry. So, these pins here for the transistor, if I just zoom in and pan up slightly and zoom in some more and focus, it's these three pins there, so actually there. So we might as well get started on getting getting those desoldered and out of the way. So we'll start off with this one. There's one. Two. We do that uh, center pin again just to make sure it's completely out. There we go. And that should pull out. There we go. Now, thankfully, on the front panel. Uh, you probably can't see it there, so I'll just zoom out a little bit. On the front panel, there is an orientation marking for the transistor. So what that means is I know what way the transistor needs to be placed onto the board. So I'll just grab out a transistor. So the transistor is a BC548C and that was according to the circuit diagram. That one says 547C so it would be interesting to see if a 548C actually works. It is possible it's a replacement part. So with this one and I'll just uh, come out again. With this one, if you see this is the top, this is the bottom, the flat side goes to the bottom, the curved side to the top. And you just spread it out slightly so that it goes through and in and pokes out the other side like so so I'll just grab some solder blade to just make sure that there's nothing between the tracks that could cause us heartache moving forward. And there we are. Right, so I'll just snip off the ends 
Actually, do you know what? Before I sniff off the ends, let's move that down there. Let's move that over here. Let's grab ourselves a bit of flex and let's plug it in. There we go, so that's currently off. Okay, that's apparently on. And unfortunately, still no display. However, let's try a cassette which is hi fi encoded. And let's hit play. And unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have rectified the issue, sadly. So what we can do is, whilst this is actually in action, and the switch has been set to automatic on, let's take some measurements with a multimeter. Open to measure is voltage at the pins of the. Um, initially, we'll start off with voltage at the pins of the transistor. So I'll just put that there. I'll just ground off that. We'll start with this pin, and that is given us. That's given us 30, or is it? Is it giving us voltage? That's given us 30.8 volts, which is about correct. That's a shame, you can't really read that, so you'll have to believe what I'm saying. Next pin is... Zero. Next pin is... Zero. So this is almost as if it's actually turned off at this point. So let's test the pins on the switch. Zero. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. So let's just try. Going down the pins on the switch. Zero all the way so far. It's almost as if there is nothing coming to that switch. So there should be at least something at that switch voltage wise. And there's two pins there which have a line. Oh, 
that's probably because I've moved the board slightly. So that's the switch. There's a line coming off the switch which goes to a link here. So it does actually go to a link on the front. So there should be voltage coming in on these pins at the top. I'd need the circuit diagram to um, decipher that in more detail. You've then got what looks like I think, yeah there's another link there which goes to, so it comes from here, goes to here, that's a link to there, that goes to here, which goes to the first pin on the trend, sorry the third, second pin on the transistor. That then goes here, which is a that's either a pot or a resistor. adjust those. I don't like adjusting pots at random but I'm interested to see if they do anything. So remember the position that they're in and just try nothing. We'll move these to see if there's any sort of dry joints or anything like that. The other possibility is that the display itself has had it. Ah, sorry, machine. So I set to put the um, eject button again, didn't I? Because that is another possibility that the display has had it as well. So all of these things are possible and you do have to wonder if it is something just as simple as that or if it is one of these ICs that's given out. If it's these ICs that are given out then I'm unlikely to want to really do anything further with it. But you see the thing is if there's no voltage at the switch then you know what has happened to that voltage where has the voltage gone effectively so let's try and follow this back so from the switch you have these two pins if you can see that let me zoom in and focus so we've got what appears to be these two pins here. Now it says to me that they should have something at them voltage wise. There should be there should be voltage at those two pins. So there's nothing according to the multimeter. If you follow the track it goes down down Oops, hang on. So there. Um, there. 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 
here into this pin here there's nothing this pin is a link that link goes to here that thing goes around up cross up 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 there this pin here so this pin here appears to be the feed for the display and there's nothing on any of these pins so this actually goes down to this connector here by the looks of it into this board so nothing 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 so there's a problem possibly on this board you can't see that sorry let me zoom it out this board here this is the connector that goes to here, so this is the connector and it's quite possible that the problem is on that board so I'll just unplug it and I'm going to see if there is a way I can get the board out so we can take a look at it and it's this connector here which goes through a few components but you've got a couple of ICs on there so I do wonder if it is if it is a problem on this particular board I'll need to be honest with you if I'm going to follow this through <laughs> further I'm going to need um, I'm going to need to review the circuit diagram just notice some of those pins were a bit greasy it should grease on them I don't know if that will fix anything but it's certainly not going to help this actually goes into um, the board on the bottom of the machine so it's very sort of video 2000 esque in that respect anyway this can go back in that just goes and tucks in like so there we go and just slot that in position there we are so the problem doesn't seem to be the switch the problem doesn't seem to be components on the board itself the problem seems to be with the board supplying it and I'd need to follow the circuit diagram back to work out why but on a positive note we've pod we've potentially given that front board a clean bill of health that doesn't seem to be where our problem actually is 
which is excellent and does give me somewhere that I actually need to look. Let's do a last ditch power on. rest of it works though. Just one set, seems it's there. That's interesting. That powered down uh, when I was trying to rewind it a couple of times, so I do wonder if there is a possibly a problem on this board or even a problem in the power supply which is this section there. So in the power supply, have we got any of those? Oh yeah, we've got a, a whole load of those light blue Philips affairs. And do you know what? I haven't even checked. There's some resistors in here. Not resistors, fuses. I haven't even checked the fuses. There is a um a rookie mistake because it's quite possible that there is a fuse that actually feeds the um, actually feeds the <sighs> feeds the display so they all look visually okay um, but I will do a continuity test on them so I'll just power the deck off I'll do a quick continuity test on them bad boys. That's fine. That's fine. That one's fine. That one's fine. And that one's fine. So thankfully the problem is not with the fuses. So that is good. So I think the next thing is would it be nice to have that front display working? Yes it would. Is it worth diving in further to find out what a fault is? Well, yeah, we could follow it back and have a look at some of the important components on the way and test, uh, give them a test and see if there are any issues. But until then, we will review the circuit diagram a bit later. But for now, for this one, that's it for today. So I'll just see if the one needs to work finish it off. Oh, I actually think that is overwhelmed. Right, let's try the eject. Perfect. Apart from that, the machine is pretty happy, to be honest with you, so yeah, it's not, uh, not too bad. I've also got the spare deck over here, which I think has the same power supply, so there's a possibility I could just try swapping power supplies, but uh, I'd rather troubleshoot this one. So it'll be more interesting. Anyway, that's it for today. If you found this interesting, don't forget to hit the like button. If you do have any suggestions as to why that's not working, uh, let me know. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you soon.